Hey, it's Darren here from Property Prosperity. I just thought I'd uh, update you on who I've been chatting to lately. I just had a uh, client send me through an email that I've um, been having a chat to them a little while. They've been looking around for a block of land and looking at building a house. And um, I suggested to go out and find the block of land and I'm happy to try and help you through the process. Um, the issue is when they come out here, they sent me this email out now they've found a block of land. I thought I'd just uh, read it through to you here. I'll quickly come in here and... Uh, See if I can find exactly what they said here. Let's have a look. Let's have a look here. Okay, what did he say? He said, referring to a conversation a couple of weeks ago, I um, just found a block of land in Windsor Gardens, and um, now he's got a bit of an idea of a plan that he wants to build on the house. And he's just said the total house area is about 150 square metres, and he wants to build a granny flat out of the back. And he's actually looking at, you know, he's seen in the local advertiser in the um, in the Sunday Mail that it costs around about uh, ninety five thousand dollars to build his house. So he's come in and say, okay, cool, that's basically what I want to spend on my house. So, um, thing I'd probably let you guys know is that the prices that are quoted in the paper in the advertiser for um, building it bears basically no resemblance to what it actually costs to build a house. So. Um, that's probably part of my concern. So, yeah, in this example, he was hoping to spend about $95,000 to build his house. In reality, it's probably going to cost him like $195,000 to build his house. So, is that so far off of what the actual house is going to cost him? It's going to cause, you know, if he was in a situation where he had bought the land already and then he um, came to me after that and he only had a limited budget, and, and he does, he has a limited budget. So, his situation is um, because he can only afford a certain amount of money, then because you've got X amount of dollars to spend on the finished off house, then you take off the price of the land and that's what allows him to spend on, on the build portion of it. So his situation, you know, he was looking around for houses for around about, um, or he wanted to spend about $400,000 and then, um, you know, he was looking around to, to spend around about, you know, two fifty on a block of land. Um, which would then need, only leave him about $150,000 to be able to build the house. Um, and that oh, in this situation, he, you know, he was going to spend ninety five on the house. He thought he had plenty of money left over. Unfortunately, the price that they're actually quoting there is so far off of what he could actually do. It would, you know, basically what it would have ended up, he would have ended up buying a block of land, um, getting halfway through the house and getting a bit stuck, which would have caused a huge amount of problems for him. So, um, so I thought I'd just have a quick chat to you, just sort of explain, you know how that may happen i suppose the thing to understand it is a bit of a marketing thing on, on the builders part i don't know if any of you have ever um built before but um you know quite often you find prices go up and it become really frustrating particularly if you've got a really tight budget um hi zach thanks for joining um if you, anyone's got any questions feel free to put their questions through here and i'm happy to try and answer any questions along the way or if they've got any experiences in the past where they you know, they had expectations of what it was going to cost them to build, and then they find out later on it was a lot more expensive than what they were, they were hoping it was going to be. So, yeah, um, so basically what happens is that the builders generally quote almost a shell of a house. Um, anything that's a variable, even sometimes like the roof and, and the, the floor and the, the footings and the anything added onto the house, you know, like landscaping, air conditioning, carpets, driveways, stormwater, retaining walls, you know, all those different things, fencing, um, none of that's included in the price. Sometimes they actually leave off the roof because they're not even sure whether you want tiled roof or whether you want like a color bond or a, a, um, a tin roof. And so they leave that off as well. And then, um, you know, the footings wise, um, they make an assumption that they don't know what the footing's gonna be. So they just leave them out altogether. Whereas, you know, everywhere you're gonna need some sort of footings. And so that can be a massive problem as well, particularly in Adelaide. Adelaide, we've got one of the worst soils in the world. Um, what that means is our, our footings have to be particularly deep. So we have, um, I don't know if you've ever seen them dig um, footings out. They dig these trenches and they pour concrete down inside there. Um, they're called um, beams or concrete concrete beams. And then they put reinforcing and a whole pile of stuff. You know, some places in Adelaide have, you know, down to like one and a half meters deep. So um, you can imagine the amount of concrete that has to go into that. And if they haven't allowed for anything and then suddenly you have all these massive deep footings, then it can add forty, fifty thousand dollars to the price of the house quite easily. So, so I suppose that's my warning to people: is um, you know, just keep an eye out. You know, if you see prices advertised in the paper, generally what you'll find is when you go out to a display home, you'll see the price that is advertised. The display home is going to be different to the price that you saw advertised in the paper. Likewise, once you start talking to the um, to the salesperson. 
um, you're going to find out the price advertised at the display home doesn't necessarily reflect the price that it's actually going to cost you. Um, the other danger, I suppose, you know, fortunately, if you find that out before you sign a contract, that's not so bad. Um, but then the problem is sometimes is you've signed the contract and then you find out there's additional costs on top of that. So suddenly, you know, it becomes, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars more than what you even signed the contract on. And the issue is if you've got a limited budget and limited finance, um, that can create a massive hassle and becomes really stressful. People end up having to get, you know, a second job or um, borrowing money from their friends and family. It's just, it's just not the best way to build a house, I suppose. The best way is just to make sure you know exactly how much you've got to spend up front. Because the benefit is if you can't afford it, then you can do something about it. You know, you can buy a cheaper block of land or you can make have a smaller house or just leave a few things out, you know, leave out the landscaping, leave out the air conditioning and, you know, save up for that down the track. Um, or obviously you can just, you know, spend some more time, save up some more money before you're ready. You know, the danger with building is once you start a building, you can't stop. You know, a half-finished house, you can't live in it, you can't rent it out, you can't sell it, you can't do anything. So you really have to get to the end. So that's where it creates this situation where you're, you're massively stressed and you're just forcing yourself to get through to the end. Otherwise, there's nothing else you can do. So my advice to you then is just, um, you know, advertising you see for, for builders, just um, almost disregard it, unfortunately. Um, and maybe if you if you do see an advert for a builder um, and you, you're hoping that it's true, just give the builder a call and just say, hey, I just want to double check that, you know, the $95,000 you quoted to build a house, you know, what's the average price that you, you would charge for the, the finished off house for a similar sort of house to that one? And you know, 99% of the time, you're going to find out it's not the the original price that they saw advertised in the paper. So, so that's my advice to you. Just you know, just do it with your eyes open. I suppose you know, if you if you've got all the information up front, things can't go too far wrong. Uh, hopefully. So, um, but if you you know, if you've got any questions or any queries, feel free to send me through a um a question or put a comment in there, and I'm happy to try and help you out along the way. But um. But yeah, building can be an awesome experience and, you know, obviously building your dream home and obviously there's a whole pile of other benefits to building, um, you know, get the house you want, but also quite often you save a bit of money as well. The developer sells you the land a bit cheaper than they otherwise would and you save a bit of money on stamp duty and so quite often there's a lot of, a bit of equity, you've made a bit of money straight away before you've started. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. So um, hopefully you found this information useful and if you have, you know, feel free to share the video or click like, that would be awesome. Or um, if you've got any questions or comments, feel free to put in there. Or if you've got something else you'd like me to talk about for my next episode, then um, yeah, let me know. I'm happy to chat about whatever you want to chat about. Cool guys, bye.